And uh, if you have your Bible, I'm going to be looking today at uh, Isaiah chapter 9. It was that passage we had read from earlier. I'm not going to be looking at the, the entire passage. It's really just one verse uh, within that, which is verse 6, which is this verse that's up on the, on the two side screens. And just as you're uh, getting to that verse, uh, we're very familiar today with birth announcements. Uh, we see on social media, uh, whenever there's a, there's a new baby, uh, that that message is quickly spread all around. So we can, it comes all shapes uh, and sizes. It was very useful over in Ballandary uh, that there was a baby just born just yesterday. And so I was able to, to talk about that. But the, there's another one born this weekend that some of you uh, uh, may not know has happened, but uh, Russell Edgar, who was here uh, for a year as part of his uh, Cornhill training course, and uh, uh, he's now a minister, of course, uh, up in Drumlee and Ballarone. Uh, he and Emma had a baby uh, just late Saturday evening, so there's a, a, a little girl uh, there, so you can just pray for, for Russell and uh, Emma. Russell certainly will need your prayers. Um, but it's one thing to have a birth announcement when a baby has actually arrived. And even in today's way of doing things, is so often we also have these gender reveal things so that as soon as you know what you're going to have, you, you post something up and then you either put it up with a, a crowd of blue or a crowd of pink and you sort of get a sense that this is what this, this, this per couple are expecting. But no one is going to have a birth announcement really ahead of time. But what we have in Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6 is a birth announcement and it's 700 years ahead of time. And I'm going to try and look at Isaiah 9 verse 6 using this birth announcement because it's looking forward to the birth of Jesus and it's giving Jesus titles, that this is what this son is going to be. And in keeping again with the th thought of Christmas, where so often Christmas is about the gifts and the gifts that we receive and, and these gifts that might make a difference in our lives, is that these titles could also be seen as Jesus' gift to you and that they make a difference to you in your life. So we're going to look at each of these four titles. The names are, are up there. Uh, the first one is that Jesus is a wonderful counselor. And, and thinking what this practically means, what this gift, the difference that it makes in your life is that Jesus offers us wisdom because that's what a counselor uh, often does. It's he's someone who sits beside you, helps you to think through your life, helps you to try and see a way through life. And yet, wisdom is not simply about being super intelligent. It's not about having a host of letters after your name. Uh, as my late father-in-law was often in the habit of saying, how come the cleverest people do the stupidest of things. You can really understand what he meant by that. And it was probably because he'd been reading something in the newspaper and you see someone who has done something wrong and they've ended up in the newspaper and it always begins in the same sort of way. It gives your name, it gives your age, and it gives your job. And then you're left as you read on because you're going to find out what stupid thing they did. And that's the way life is. And we do wonder at times why do people do what they do? And it's not... Sometimes there are big questions that we have to ask ourselves. The questions that sometimes we ask ourselves and the deep questions, they're really hard. You don't even need to be a men mensa to give an answer to them. You don't need to be a Mensa to think about these things, but I'm sure at some point or other, you will have asked questions like, what is life about? Why am I here? Who am I? Is there any meaning 
in what I'm doing in life or what I'm having to go through. As I stand in front of you as a Christian, I believe fundamentally that Jesus is able to give a sense of meaning into that situation. Even when Jesus says something very simple, like, come and follow me, he is giving us a direction in life, a place where we can find a sense of satisfaction is that, is that when we start to follow him, when we start to honor him, that it gives a whole sense of purpose to what we do. And truly then, in that decision to decide to, to follow Jesus, decide to be a follower and to be a disciple of his is what gives value and meaning. But even when we do decide to follow Jesus, even when we have experienced that, we have found that, yet still we struggle each and every day. Because we wonder, how do I know what to do? So perhaps then as I read some Bible verses like John chapter 14, if I read verses 16 into to 17, where Jesus said, I will ask the Father and he will give you another advocate to help you and to be with you forever, the spirit of truth. And that word that is translated there, advocate, another word for that is counselor. And a counselor is someone who sits beside you and helps you to make sense of what is going on in your life. So as to help you deal with what is happening each and every day, someone who is there for you. And if you still doubt whether God can give you the sense of wisdom in, in life, James 1 verse 5, it says, If any of you lack wisdom, he should ask God who gives generously to all without finding fault. So Jesus does offer you wisdom to make sense of life and yet also daily as you go through life. And as we move on a little bit more of these titles, the second one is mighty God and what does that mean for you? And I think it is pointing immediately to something that we really do need. It is a sense of power because most of us do not feel that we are in control. Power is a big, big topic. We have a lot of people who want to have power. And we always assume that people who are more important than us, people who are more influential than, than us, have power. And if only I had the power that they have, then my life would be an awful lot easier and an awful lot better than it is. Uh, whenever Connor, uh, our youngest, was a lot younger, probably about 12 years ago. Uh, he used to have this sense, a very clearly articulated sense of power and control and, and status structure within the house, is that he believed I'm the boss of mom and mom's the boss of Bethany, and both Bethany's the boss of Megan and Be Megan's the boss of him, but he's the boss of nobody. And that really irked him. And that his answer to life in those moments was, I want to be the boss. And he had a sense that if I was at least one person further up in the food chain, uh, my life would be an awful lot easier. And yet the disappointing thing is, when we realize it, is that even people whom we perceive to have power never have as much power as we think they have. And I say that with reference to Connor thinking that I'm the boss of Nora. <laughs> and, but, you know, that is exactly the same situation all over our world, whether you're in government. I mean, we've got a prime minister who is in power, and yet she's facing a big vote come Tuesday. And I wonder this weekend what sense of power she thinks she really has. Or whether you're in work, and the type of person you perceive to have the power in work, or whatever it is that you happen to be doing. And it's all highlighting then one of these big issues in life that we genuinely don't feel strong. We have this sense of powerlessness in our lives. And that's a big issue for all of us. It's the, the answer to why people don't vote. They have the opportunity to do that. They say, what's the point? It makes no difference. And so whether then you look at your own life and whatever you happen to be going through right at the moment, whether there's some big issue in your life and that you're not 
in control of that and you will feel very deeply this sense of lack of control. It's, it's like you're, you're on one of these roller coasters and it's just going through uh, the motions and you're sitting there and you're just following the tracks and you don't know what's going to happen and you certainly don't feel in control. Maybe it's because in life you've messed up and you've done something that's wrong and you're experiencing uh, the result of that. Or maybe even in a, in a work context, there's uncertainty. That uncertainty comes from the possibility of feeling that you are replaceable. And yet this fact that Jesus is introduced to us as mighty God is a reminder that even though we do not always have power or control over situations, even over ourselves, but we are reminded that there is one who is strong enough and there is one who can change whatever is happening to us, that he has the power to change things. We believe that prayer can change things. And so Jesus comes alongside us and he assists us And he, we have a confidence in the gospel itself, of course, when we remind ourselves that this whole idea of salvation that God has, and whenever he gave Jesus into the world, and whenever Jesus was born as a little baby, and what God had in mind was not simply to deal with human beings for maybe a period of 30 years, and to enable them to have a way of salvation and then simply to leave them to get on with things by themselves. God would never have done that. He, he didn't just do that and then leave us, but that he's constantly involved with us. And that's why when you read the Bible and you read so many accounts of individuals as they reflect upon what God has been doing, whether you're reading in the Psalms or whether you're thinking of another character, so often they say, God, you did this, you did that, you did the other. And the reason that they recite all these events and the reason that they remember what God did in their own lives or in the lives of their people is because they're saying, God, if you did it then, you can do it now. This is our mighty God who gives us power. That might be a gift that you need to know at Christmas. Or another of these titles in the next one is Everlasting Father. Now you've probably heard this Bible passage umpteen times and we, we read that and we just move on but I want you not to simply let that title, that name fly over your head the way it normally does but to think what is happening here. What you have here is God telling us that a son is going to be born, that this Jesus is coming. And the title that he gives Jesus is Everlasting Father. Not make you sit up and think, what's he doing? God the Father, and he's announcing God the Son, and yet he's giving him the title everlasting father and surely it must be hinting at the very nature of who God is himself that I and Jesus are one and Jesus also takes that up also in John's gospel chapter 14 and he says it in reverse and he says you know if you have seen me you have seen the father I and the father are, are one and essentially I think what it's all pointing to is the fact that in the gospel and in the community of the church that is created through the gospel, we have family and we have a place where we belong. Now, one point in our lives, of course, we didn't belong. There was a time before we became a Christian when what the Bible says about us is that you were outside and you were excluded and you didn't have any of this but when you understood the gospel and when you took Jesus Christ as your saviour and you became a child of God, you were part of the family. And being part of the family means we're able to pray as part of the family. 
And so whatever issue is going on in your life right now, whether you feel disheartened or whether you feel worried, whether you feel unsure, whether you feel shamed and guilty about things, whatever your emotions and whatever the situation, I want you to know today that you can talk to the Father through the Son in the power of the Holy Spirit and you can find that sense of acceptance and family. And the final title is Prince of Peace. And again, what it's pointing to is one of the things that our world lacks. And our world lacks contentment. Tom Brady is an American football player, one of the most successful American football players of all time. And as you read about him, he seems to have everything you could possibly want between money and success and fame and absolutely everything. And Every Super Bowl winner gets a, a special ring from the, the American Super Bowl. And he was asked in an interview, out of all the ones you've been in, because he has more, I think, more than anybody else, which one is your favorite? And he answered, the next one. And there's someone, surely, who lacks a sense of contentment. But at Christmas time, we're always asking people, what do you want for Christmas? What do you really want? You ask those questions and you could get a list the length of your arm. Because there's always something we feel we want that will make life easier or better. There's always something nagging away at us. I could do with that. And yet if I remind you of some words of C.S. Lewis in Mere Christianity, he says, the presence of an unsatisfied, unabated longing is a sign that we were created to be satisfied by something from another world. The fact that you are never satisfied, the fact that you feel there's always something that will make life better is a sign that you need satisfaction that you can't achieve for yourself and that only God can provide. Never mind what do you want for Christmas, there's another question if you're a parent you will really hate. And that question is, are we nearly there yet? And particularly over this Christmas period if you're traveling to a family member's home. And perhaps at the destination, the children are going to get a present. And they're excited about that. They want that. And so on that journey, if it's a long one, they will be asking that question, are we nearly there yet? How do you deal with those questions? Do you just say, no? Or do you say, just have a little bit of patience because when you get there, of course, it will be worth it. And even if you had to stop at an apple green or something for a loo stop and you get out, no one has any intention of hanging around there longer than they need to. Because you know that that temporary stop is nothing more than a temporary stop and that you are definitely wanting to get to your final destination. And just thinking about it, that's our experience as Christians going through this life. This place is a temporary home. We are on a journey. And that journey will find its fulfillment in heaven itself. And along the way, we will experience difficulties. There will be sadness. There will be hurts. There will be upsets. There will be anxieties and there will be fears. And oftentimes we, we feel consumed by these things and we don't know how we'll be able to see a way forward. And these things, these situations, these moments that we encounter really do unsettle us. So every broken relationship that we endure, every time we are burdened at work and we felt we have been dealt with unfairly by others, every time chronic elf health, sorry, that was a Christmas thing saying elf, wasn't it? Uh, every time chronic health uh, comes in 
upon us and intrudes into our lives. Every time something bad happens to good people, every time even we fall into some old recurring sin and we don't feel we've got the strength to get out of it, all these things are nothing more than reminders that we are unsettled and that we are longing to get to a home and a destination where we will be content and where we will be at peace and we are headed to that place. We're not there yet, but we are heading there. And so if I read some words of Paul with which I conclude in chapter 4 of Philippians and verse 6, recognizing all the the anxieties and all the, the things that pain us through life, Paul writes, Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving. Present your requests to God and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. We have looked at these titles of Jesus today almost like gifts. Four different distinct gifts and perhaps one of them might mean more to you than some of the others. But they are given to you to make a difference in your life. That's the way that we can understand them today. And perhaps as we just pause in prayer for a moment, that we will recognize what it is that Jesus offers me as an individual. So let's just be quiet in prayer. Father, you speak your word into our hearts. You show us ourselves, but you also show us Jesus. In our tiredness, in our thinness, we present ourselves to you. that we might find satisfaction and safety and security and strength in you. Amen.